webinar last week on DNS failover. This one is more focused on just the CDN failover piece of the business, right? So you're thinking about multiple CDNs and how you can use that to benefit your organization. So what I wanna do is talk about um, that. Um, real quickly, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Stephen Job. I'm actually the president and founder of DNS Made Easy and Constellix. Started DNS Made Easy back in 2001. Then, at, you know, we're now a, a strong organization. Um, we have individuals pretty much worldwide at this point. We have 24 POPs where we physically own routers, switches, bare metal name servers. Uh, and we also have many more monitoring POPs all over the world to implement this Constellix solution for traffic management. And we have been in the space for a long time. Um, for those that have known me a little more personally, I am not a sales and marketing guy. It's not my background at all. I'm a computer science major um, from a long time ago, uh, alumni of the University of Buffalo. And that's really my passion is in engineering and designing systems um, that stay up and that are scalable. So DNS Mean Easy entered the failover industry starting in 2002 is when we first started implementing DNS failover monitoring systems and moving traffic around. In 2010, we started adapting with the industry trends, right? The uh, GeoDNS landscape, providing a better digital experience for the end user. In 2015 is when we launched Constellix, and that is actually uh, the, and I'm gonna make sure I don't have any questions going on. Um, that is actually the, the first time where we actually allowed people to do CDN failover. And we'll talk about why we couldn't do it earlier in DNS Made Easy. Uh, in 2018, we started introducing artificial intelligence or real-time analytics to your DNS queries. In two, early 2020, and we started doing advanced multi-CDN solutions, right? And in 2021, it was just our constant expansion. Um, obviously, we're now going into the post-pandemic era. Obviously, I'm still working out of the house. I hope everybody has had a, uh, a healthy experience through COVID. If you did get sick, I hope you healed, and we're all moving forward now post-pandemic. So what I want to start off with, and I think we have, we have just about that 50% attendance rate, which I'm happy with. Um, so what I want to start with is talking about everyone's, and I believe most people in this webinar have an IT background uh, of some sort. So I want to talk about this redundancy. Let's not talk about CDN redundancy right now. Let's talk about mail server redundancy. Um, when you actually have a mail service, right, and you have MX records, how many of you have more than one MX record, right? And that's the question. It's not, do you have multiple pop do, who has just one MX record in their in, in environment? Um, and you maybe don't know it, uh, don't answer it. Uh, or if you do the answer, don't worry about it. Um, I actually know the statistic of looking at over a million domain names in DNS Made Easy. Uh, I know how many have more than one MX record. Um, all right, so is it, then it's really the question. That who has just one single point of failure in, in for mail um, at this point? Um, and so uh, I think I have a decent response here. And let me see what the, res the results are. So, okay, 69% of you say you have, uh, okay. So the truth, it, 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 the interesting part is in DNS Made Easy, close to 96% of all the domains have more than one MX record, right? Um, and, and maybe you, 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 you do or do not, but no one has one MX record anymore. DNS, I mean, because mail, um, what kind of came out at the same time, the mail RFCs and all that stuff, SMTP came at the same time, it automatically had the redundancy built into it, right? So when you have your DNS record, uh, you have what's called an MX record, you have different MX levels, right? And you have your primary mail server, your secondary mail server, et cetera. So that's an interesting thing. And so what I wanna ask you guys now at this point is, how many of you have redundancy and your web and application service level? Um, so how many are doing DNS failover for their web server or for the applications and stuff like that? Um, this is another interesting statistic that I'm, I'm curious about. Um, 
and this is where I'm, this is my mission in life is to try to um, push this. All right, let's give this a couple more seconds, and go through over here and let's see what everyone does and what they feel like. Um, wow, if, the, if the, I'm looking at the statistics, if it stays that way, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna close it. I, I cannot believe I see a, a statistic like that, trust me. There are more than um, two people in this webinar to show up like that, but it's actually, it came up to being 50-50. So we got about 100, uh, 124 that did, uh, now that the, some people actually just left, I guess that must have bored you, and uh, some, someone just joined. So uh, 124 said yes, and 124 said no. So uh, that was a perfect, Wow, you, that's that's like that was like a political question. It's like a 50-50 thing, right? Uh, it's like one of those things. Do you see the dress in this color or this color, right? Um, so that's like a perfect thing. So half of you are saying you have that redundancy, half of you are saying that's not. And what I want to try to say uh, and, and try to mention is that in, in DNS Made Easy, we see you know high 90s percent of of records have multiple MX records. We see a far less number of that having redundancy at the 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 that the what's called DNS failover, monitoring your web server, moving your traffic from one system to the other. And then we even see a far less number of that now. We go one step farther into like CDN redundancy. There's even less people doing that. Um, you know, we see a lot of it in the industry, but if I looked over the last two weeks, right, there were two large global CDN companies that had outages. Uh, Fastly had a large outage, uh, what, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And then Akamai had an outage not even a week ago, right? It was another significant, large, impactful outage that kind of lingered on for a few hours. And the number of large websites that were completely off, right, that were down, it was just surprising. It's surprising to me to still see that going on. And what we want to talk about is that how multi-CDN management can eliminate these outages, right? Currently, right now, there's about 27 and a half. These are statistics you can find online. 27 and a half million websites are currently using CDN networks, right? 41% of the top 10,000 websites are using a CDN. Um, less than 2% of those are actually using multiple CDNs, which is shocking. And the point that I'm trying to bring up is if everyone's doing backup mail, if everyone learned in the 80s that, okay, one mail server, right, is not, or one mail service provider is not true redundancy, I need to have backup MX records and backup redundancy, how come that same sort of insight is not being pushed out into web servers and CDN providers and stuff like that, right? No one trusts their mail service, they don't want to lose the email, but they're, they're, they're more, it's been acceptable to, your CDN network to go down, right? Um, it's acceptable if they're down for an hour or three hours. I know they'll, they'll come up with an SLA and they may give you a credit or not give you a credit, uh, which doesn't really compensate for the, I know the individuals on this webinar, it, if you're in charge of your network, you're in charge of your IT team, it's impactful, right? It's a lot of stress, it's a lot of emotions, your site's not up, you put all your faith in this CDN and the CDN goes down. So we're going to come up with some ideas here, and I'm going to show you how quickly we can solve that problem, right? And and talk about, and once again, not every nut fits every bolt, right? Not every uh, every solution is for every single you know problem, but we can come up with you know characterizing you know three or four different best case scenarios and examples and implement those solutions for you. So uh, deploying, uh, overall, we do know that deploying a CDN can decrease your load times by 50% or more. Um, and the percentage of time spent on mobile devices has just increased um, dramatically. Um, where we are in the space, once again, we've done DNS failover. We're currently monitoring over 190,000 systems every two minutes or less in Constellix and DNS Made Easy. We are considered right now the world leader in multi-CDN configuration. So Constellix has over 200,000 domains that are using CDN failover right now. Now, sometimes the CDN for most of those domains, I'll be honest with you, most of those domains are gonna be a, a, an internal CDN that they've developed, right? So a lot of our clients 
are using their own, they're using the GeoDNS of Constellix to create their own CDN, and then they're using that to then fail over to other services if necessary. But since 2020 now, we have over a thousand domains that are currently using more advanced multi-CDN traffic management. And I'll talk to you about what I consider simple and what we consider more advanced um, throughout this webinar. And then once again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to just throw it into the question part um, as we go through this webinar, and I will try to answer them. If I can't answer them right away, I will answer them at the end of the webinar. Uh, we may go a few minutes over. I do a lot of information to go over over here. So uh, once again, what is a multi-CDN? So it stands for multiple CDNs. Yeah, that's a shocker. Um, it's, I, I hope you enjoyed that insight and I'm gonna just drop mic and walk away. Um, and so it provides the ability to take multiple of these CDN networks that we trust our services with, that we trust to serve the content to our end users, to give the digital experience. And we're gonna take the benefits of all of them and combine them into one. So we take the good stuff here and the good stuff here and the good stuff here and make like a, you know, a super team, right? Think of a sports team. You're not just taking the same people that sometimes are strong in all the same skill, right? Um, you may need some guy that can score the goals and some guy that can give the assists and some guy that can set up the plays and some guy that's good at defense, right? You're gonna build your team based upon that and you're gonna provide that as your, your, your infrastructure plan for your organization, right? Uh, and that's kind of like the big part about it. So I wanna just ask uh, one more quick poll question. Try to keep it um, interesting. Why do we think multi-CDNs are, are not the industry standard right now? Um, do you feel they're, they're too costly? Do you believe that the, the, the solutions do not exist? Um, lack of providers that offer it? There's no information about it. Um, obviously, that's one of the reasons why we're doing this webinar today is to try to bring awareness to the, um, the industry um, on this. So give me some um, what your thoughts are. And this is this is an answer I don't know because I'm asking for your opinion. So I want to know based upon the people um, involved, uh, what are the, the, the thoughts and the uh, feedback? Um, all right, and I'm gonna keep the poll. I'm gonna keep this webinar moving fast. So if, if you don't, if you miss the poll, don't worry about it. Uh, we're just looking for conversation pieces later on. Um, all right, we're gonna close this poll. Let's share the results and see what we got here. So 20, uh, number one, not enough information and knowledge. All right, good. So that's actually a good reason why we're doing these webinars. Once again, we're gonna be uh, taping this webinar. I guess no one tapes it anymore. That's a bad terminology, like we're back in the VHS beta days. So we're actually recording this webinar electronically uh, and we will be sharing it um, in our YouTube channel afterwards. Um, 20, a, a little over a quarter of you believe um, it's too costly. That's good to know. Um, and I will, if anyone here uses DNS VDs or Constellix services, we tried to prove that wrong. Um, 18 percent uh, the third most popular solution is it's a lack of providers that offer it um, that's hundred percent true and I'm not denying that um, 18 there, there's, 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 there's I, I know about I, I personally know about eight or ten multi cdn providers uh, only two us being one of them I think can do it sort of the right way and I believe that we have the solution that does it the best and I'll explain why in a little bit but this there's not a, and the reason why not a lot of people are actually asking for it right if more people asked for it if you know if we were so uh, like backup mail services right those multiple MX records the reason why there's a million backup mail services out there is because everyone says email is requirement for us we cannot if my mail server goes down I don't want my emails to bounce right that was a requirement that they put up way back in, in the 1980s when the internet was not as reliable. And we said, we can't, you know, we know the mail server is not going to be reach, reachable all times. I don't want that mail server, to, I don't want the mail to bounce, right? So the, the experts and the, the veterans of the industry at the time, right, they set a standard and they said, we're going to have redundancy at the solution. Because CDNs weren't out back then, it's not built into what we, you know, there's no redundancy built at the A record or the quad A record or the C name record. But there's there's things that we've adapted to, right? Constellix and DNS Made Easy now have adapted to that. 
um, standards, and we're going to go forward from there. All right. So what are the reasons why you don't want to have a single CDN provider, right? So let's talk about that real quickly. Every CDN provider, remember I was talking that analogy that I came up with, with regarding the, the, the sports teams. So every CDN, I'll be honest with you, and just like every IT solution that your organization has, has its strengths and weaknesses, right? Some CDNs are great on video, some are not. Some CDNs are great on static content, some are not. Some are great on dynamic content. Some are great on putting the compute to the edge of the cloud, all those sort of reasons. There's a different plethora uh, and, and skill set of technologies that different CDNs have based upon what your needs are. And as your brand or as your organization grows, or as everybody on this webinar, if you move from one group to another group, right, your organization may have different needs for a CDN that your previous organization did not, right? So there are times that when you're building a business, right, and you build this, you're like, okay, I need to develop and push this content to the edge. I'm putting a CDN in responsible for this. As your brand grows, you may need now to have more services that the CDN provider no longer is an expert with or has understanding of how to do it. And so that's why I talk about your organization outgrows the this, this service. You may have different geographic outreach, right? If you were just a real local provider in a region or a, a certain specific location or, and, and, and the world, and now you're growing you know, to another region, or you're growing globally, you're now gonna have a bit different geographic reach, right? Some CDN providers don't scale well, right? You got, I mean, so, some of the CDN space, I'll be honest with you, still is, you know, like the internet, they, they still price it like the enterprise services of, you know, 2000, right? They, they make you commit to this huge bucket of bandwidth, right? And if you go over, they penalize you, right? Like they slap your wrist and say, how dare you grow more than what your contract is to. So we're gonna charge you this insane amount of money to show your website any more times. Um, that's just, I call, I'll consider that enterprise sales, right? Because there's a, there's a salesperson on the other end who is, you know, takes you out to your lunch or dinner and friends you, but they're motivated by the revenue that they bring the company because that's how they get paid themselves, right? And so when it's not a cost-effective solution to grow with the CDN provider, and if you have a contract, right? If you have that one, two, some CDN companies do a three-year contract where you have to use this much bandwidth, right? because they use that, because if they know you're gonna use so much bandwidth, they then expect so much of their path traffic that they can guarantee in certain pops, which they then can do pairing arrangements and stuff like that to lower their costs down, right? So if you're a large content distribution um, media, right? And if you have a contract with a CDN provider, it's better for them to, for you to commit long-term because they know they're gonna be pushing so much bandwidth cer through certain pops which they can then bring their overall costs down, right? So, but there's times now when you grow and they start penalizing you for that, it's not cost effective. You might wanna start bringing other people in, right? And then let's talk about the uptime, right? The 100% uptime. If a CDN provider is not giving you the uptime that you need, um, you have to look for a change, right? And I'll be completely honest, no CDN provider is going to have a hundred percent uptime, right? Um, if you look at the historical evidence. Everyone's had outages. Two large ones last week. You know, Cloudflare, numerous outages. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Everyone has outages. Um, you know, and, and the best way to predict the future is looking at the past, right? Look at historical evidence. Look at who is having these outages. When these outages happen, right? Could they change? Yes. Everybody tries to change to try to do better, but you could only plan the future by looking at the past, right? Um, that's why there's actually history classes. Um, uh, don't need to get into that. All right, growth of CDNs. It has taken off through the roof, right? Which is why it's more important than ever to look at it. Um, Pre-COVID, this was the expected plan, was the blue line. Um, the, uh, the pandemic came and we exceeded all expectations. It just, it took off um, and it, it's, it's out of there. These are the top four reasons that we're, we mentioned real quickly again, um, higher availability, better performance, increased capacity, enhanced security, right? Outages are happening all the time. 
these are all the outages. Fastly, Akamai, Cloudflare, Microsoft. Uh, that should be Amazon CloudFront, uh, not Amazon Route 53, Amazon CloudFront. All of these have had outages, um, and these are just some of the bigger ones, right? There's a lot of other regional outages. There's a lot of global outages. It just it keeps happening um, over and over again. Um, so what I want to talk about is three different um, failover strategies. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, how to give yourself some sort of redundancy in this scenario really quickly. So the first one is CDN failover. How do I have one provider and bring you down to another one? And I'm going to show you real quickly how that's done in Constellix. Uh, I'm going to show my screen in a second and kind of walk through it. Um, and then we're going to talk about, you also could do performance-based multi-CDN. Um, and that's a, a little more complicated. We're now going to make decisions based upon which CDN provider is the fastest in a region. And then we got even more performance-based, some advanced performance, where we're going to do based upon the view of the end user, your end users, which CDN should they use. And I'm going to kind of go off script um, to try to show you some of the things that we're actually working on as well that we're going to be showing to uh, the world in the next, like, hopefully by the end of summer. Um, should be even earlier, though, uh, about some of our multi-CDN strategies. So uh, this slide is my indication that I'm going to jump off script now and start going. So does anyone have any questions at this point? Um, feel free to mention them. And I'm actually going to bring in uh, some information here. I'm going to walk you through a demo about how setting CDN failover um into the environment um so and i'm actually gonna you should be looking at my my nice mac background at this point all right so i'm gonna bring you into the constellix interface and what i want to do is show you real quickly is i have this uh i'm gonna i think it's called yeah so this is my site right it's garden origin that server us and it's it's uh my site it's a template i found online i implemented and i put out there and what i've done really quickly is i've i'm only going to do this for two cdns to such size save time but i put one of these on a stack path cdn uh real quickly um there it is so that it's a pull cdn it takes the content and serves it um if i was to serve it again it'd be super fast um, and then I did another one, and I do work with, we, we work with other companies like, like uh, Cashfly really well. Um, we constantly, I don't have one set up on that network um, right now, but I created one real quickly before this demo on, on Bunny CDN. These are two CDNs that uh, many of our users are using. So I got one here on StackPath, one here on Garden CDN. Now, if you do a CDN, what you would usually do, and let me log into the Constellix uh, control panel um, really quickly. I'm gonna do my, my time-based authentication to get into my uh, account, right? So what I would normally do if I was to go into my domain, um, and I can tell somebody that actually was in here earlier today, um, is what I would normally do is normal, uh, I would just create a record called garden and I would point it to one of these systems, right? Um, right? And then I would, you know, I would say garden that server that's points to this and your CDN's done, right? You configured your CDN, you, you did it, you're pretty much over, right? But I want to implement failover now. I want to implement if one failover, one system goes down, I want to give it to the other one. So what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to create up two little monitoring points and I'm going to monitor the CDNs, right? So part of Constellix is our, our monitoring piece. And that's the thing. If you're going to have failover, you got to monitor your CDNs and make that redundancy. So let me just create uh, a quick web check and I'm going to call this uh, my garden um, stack path. Uh, I'm going to give it that host name. And I'm gonna say, okay, we're gonna select everything. Done. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's garden.server.us. And I can actually do a quick little test to make sure it's currently functioning. 
Um, but it's working fine, perfect. All right, save it. All right, and then I'm gonna create another web check and we're gonna do the same one. I'm gonna say my, my bunny CDN uh, for my garden. So once again, I created another CDN. Uh, it's just pulling the content for me. That's my host. Uh, I'm just gonna monitor from everywhere right now to try to save time. And I'm just gonna do the same thing here, garden.server.us and implement this. And I always like to do a quick little test first just to make sure and it's working fine and do save. Okay, so I'm just now monitoring these two different CDMs, right? I'm gonna have um, Constalix Sonar to do the quick little monitoring piece for me. And now the next step is to implement CDN failover. If one CDN goes down, I want it to go somewhere else. So what I'm gonna do here uh, is uh, I'm gonna find where my, uh, let me actually apply, all right. Um, let me get these changes. Someone made a change on our uh, one record. Um, and, and if you haven't used Constalix before, we do allow you to put notes and configurations. We have rollback history and all that other stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna try to skip all that right now and get to the, uh, the parts of the configuration that I wanna show you about. Um, our whole point is that any configuration should really be less than five minutes. Uh, it should not be a complex solution. So what I wanna do here now is I wanna say garden is going to be my, my spot. Uh, let me do it to a, a lower TTL and I wanna do failover. And then I'm gonna specify Right, and then there it is, it's automatically there. And, and that, that's the, those are the two checks I just created, right? The garden stack path and the bunny CDN garden, kind of changed the naming up and that's it. I'm gonna do save and close. Um, and I now have CDN failover, I'm done, right? I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna commit this change and I'm gonna push this live. I could put a note there and do whatever. And so right now I have just fixed the problem that you know hundreds of thousands of websites have suffered in the last two weeks when they had no CDN redundancy built into their solution whatsoever. Um, if we're monitoring the one CDN, now we're, we're, we're obviously giving all the traffic, right? If I was to go um, into, garden.server.us, right? I'm now giving all that traffic to one, right? Um, and then if that CDN goes down, if I do a DNS propagation check and if I do garden.server.us, if I was to choose C name, if we hit like the, the Google resolving name servers and you can tell we're hitting stack path pretty much everywhere, right? Around the world right now. All right, we're done. CDN failover, step one, finished. Let's say we wanted to go a little more complex. We wanted to split the traffic, right? So what I would do then is I would actually create a, uh, a pool uh, and pools allow you to do kind of like round robin with C names, which technically in C names you can't do. So we're gonna call this my, uh, my webinar test. And now I'm just gonna specify same thing. I'm gonna choose the same thing, but now I'm gonna say I wanna split the traffic uh and i want to choose uh stack path and choose that so and then i'm following sonar here i could say always off i could change these i could say if it does go off turn it off for good off on any failover i could also change the weights if i wanted bunny cdn to get four times as more traffic as stack path right i can do 40 and, uh, and 10 or i can do four and one or you know i can do six and two, three times more traffic than the other one. I can now start doing unequal weights. And this is also now, this is worldwide. We can go as specific as we want to. We're just gonna keep adding to the use cases here, right? So now I'm gonna say, let's just keep the traffic so it's uh, uh, it's the same, right? So let's just do two and two. Uh, I'm gonna create this pool. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to my domain. Uh, and There it is. And what I wanna do now is once it loads up all my records, 
is let's go to garden. And I now want to change it to a pool. And then I'm going to choose this to my uh, my webinar test. There it is. So now I now have this set up um, where I'm now using a pool. And then I'm splitting the traffic 50-50, or we could do the unequal weights. We could do anything we want to. Um, I got to commit the change and say save. And so now when I push this change out, now I'm using two CDNs at the same time, right? I'm splitting my traffic. We, I, I chose 50-50. Um, and then we're going to respond half the time with one CDN's FQDN, half the time with another FQDN, right? Which is a very popular thing. Many times when people start committing to these more enterprise CDN salesy things, right? You have to commit so many uh, gigabytes of bandwidth a month, uh, so many terabytes. It's if you don't use it, you lose it, right? It's like the old cell phone services. You get so many minutes if you don't—they don't roll over. There's nothing like that. So, um, circa 2001, when it comes to pricing, um, a lot of the CDN companies out there today still market that way, right? So you're not going to want to like if you're paying for it, you don't want to throw it away, but you want to have that second person there constantly getting traffic, making sure that that, that the data is there. So we, we sometimes customers will say, I want 90% of the traffic go to this one CDN provider, and I want 10% to go to another CDN provider, right? That's also a very popular use case. You just change, you know, change those numbers, do nine and one, right? Um, so now if I was splitting that traffic, if we would do the same query, um, I think this is actually going to be cached. Um, it's going to be split, but if you were actually were to, to run it um, uh, again everywhere in the world, you're going to see different uh, lookups. So if I actually was in Sonar, um, let me go back into Sonar real quickly. Um, let me get in here. I'm going to do this. I'll do these checks live, and we do an instant check. And I'm going to do on garden.server.us, and uh, we're going to query uh, uh, eight dot eight. Oops, make sure I'm typing properly for you guys. Uh, and if I say okay, from Chicago, right now, uh, actually, I'm getting. I want to do the C name so I can see the right. It's Stack Path. Uh, if I was to query it in, in, in Dallas, stack pad, one of these is going to give me there garden, right? Um, bunny CDN, right? It, it It's going to be a 50-50 response for everybody out there right now, right? So that that's the next level uh, of you now have round robin slash failover, right? Once again, done in five minutes. Now, the next level, right, of CDN stuff is now let's start basing this on performance, right? let's actually start preferring one provider over the other, right? So we do have multiple options in there as well. Um, and I'm gonna show you that real quickly. I'm gonna go through just another demo. Uh, uh, we're gonna remove this record. And we're not gonna be using it anymore. Um, and what I wanna do now is I'm gonna create a, a multi, more advanced traffic and i'm gonna go right to the top um we can do synthetic checks and other checks uh so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna set up a multi-cdn configuration let's create a new one um and i'm gonna call this my, my, my garden cdn garden.server.us and i'm just gonna do the basic checks and i'm gonna do one from bunny uh, I'm going to choose one from, and you can put, we have, you can put any, any CDN provider you want to use, you can put in here, uh, you can do custom, you can do the ones that we have as our community data, et cetera. So now we're going to do two different CDN providers. Um, and once again, I'm going to put their FQDNs. Um, we're looking at the garden.server.us and I'm going to base these decisions on all this. So I'm going to build this in. So what we're going to do now is that the service is going to provision a bunch of checks for you, right? So now we're going to go to a whole nother level and we're going to check regionally everywhere. We're going to make decisions regionally. Um, I could go through the sonar configuration and do all this for you. If you watched a webinar that I did maybe three years ago, that's what I did for 20 minutes. I was creating checks. Uh, it was a very exciting webinar. 
Um, but this one, I'm going to skip all that. And what we're doing now is that all the services behind the scenes are constantly provisioning everything for you to detect outages, make changes, and do everything you want. So what I'm going to do here um, is it's going to go through and it's actually provisioning. It takes like a minute or two to provision. So in the meantime, what I want to do is just talk about a couple of other uh, parts of our presentation um, going forward. So let me just jump into that and then we'll get back to the other part. So things to consider when building. Um, we obviously talked already about simple failover. We when we, I showed you how simple it is to monitor a CDN and you can choose where you want to monitor and how quick it is to have if one system goes down, move to the other one. Uh, and then I also showed you how you can have multiple CDNs and if one goes down, the other one takes all the traffic. And I showed you how to have different weights of how much traffic you want to give a CDN, right? And we can do that all regionally, globally, whatever you want to do, whatever your use case is. But when you're building your multi-CDN strategy, right, one thing when I'm talking about not every organization is alike, right? Um, should you use GeoDS? Should you, should you not use GeoDNS? Should the configuration be performance-based, right? We didn't make performance-based decisions on the first two configurations. I'm making performance-based decisions now, right? Do we do load balancing that we talked about, all right? I showed you how we can do load balancing by creating what's called a pool in Constellix, right? Uh, and then also the complexity of adding multiple CDNs. Now, understanding, right, and I'm, I'm like, you're gonna say, Steve, these are very simple. This doesn't fit my use case. We use a CDN here. They do this purpose for us here. I understand that. And I'm not trying to say that every single solution should be a two minute fix. Mm -hmm. um, or if it is a two minute fix, kudos, and then take the rest of the week off, right? Because you just did a lot of good uh, impact for your organization. But what I am saying is that you could probably say, okay, well, if 80% of my CDN solutions can be fixed real quickly, take those out, pull off the low hanging fruits out of the tree and solve those um, and get those in there and get those incorporated, right? Just like everybody has backup mail services, everyone should have backup web services everybody should have backup CDN services and redundancy CDN services. And it should be a standard. It should be just like, you know, I planned this, I'm gonna have this because it's not worth the cost of the outage. It really isn't um, going forward. Um, all right, so this is the, I'm gonna get into this slide in a second. I wanna go back to my implementation piece of it right here. Um, so this, what you're gonna see here is that it created everything and what it actually did in the background um let me actually show you actually me actually i gotta delete these old ones but i'm just going to clean out of the system for everybody i don't really need to see um old test stuff it was my test one i did earlier today um it's always good to do the demo i used to do you know webinars on the fly without actually testing it and i realized that bad way of preparation um so you can see what it did here is it created a whole bunch of checks, right? And I'm checking regionally in Asia Pacific, Europe, North America East, North America West, Oceania. And we're checking the same host names, but we're checking them differently, right? We're only checking in Oceania, for instance, right? If I was to go in here, I'm only checking from, you know, Sydney, Adelaide, and Auckland, right? Because that's our monitoring points we have in Oceania. If I go back to North America, I'm only monitoring from North America. And by doing that and gathering those times, I can then take that data, right? Or what we do is we take that data and we throw it, we go back to our pools again, right? And now you can see that we're actually gathering the metrics. So which CDN is actually faster? Now, this is the, we consider this um, basic performance CDN, right? This is not advanced. This is basic. So we got synthetic checks, meaning the checks are running from multiple facilities and we're measuring the performance of that CDN. And then we're deciding if you had more, you could, if you, you, know, you could have, I mean, if you look at that other CDN configuration, I had like eight different CDNs configured on it, right? I could choose the best performing three, the best performing two. Right now I'm doing the best performing one server. I'm updating these times every minute, right? I'm using the best performing one. Uh, there's some extra advanced configurations in here. Deviation allowance means how fastly do I want to move from one CDN to the other if the times are only within 
or they got to be a 50% difference. But since StackPath in this region, in North America West, is measuring a 13 milliseconds response, and this time is at 20 milliseconds, right? We're going to prefer to use StackPath, right? Very simple. Now, the next level on top of this um, is so I'm actually going to provision this into uh, my server real quickly. Uh, let me just go into here. Um, I'm actually going to provision this this setup so we can actually test it. And as you individuals are at home and you're watching this, you feel free to run your, your queries. Uh, I'm going to run my garden CDN and garden, and I'm just going to do like a 20 second instance. And I'm going to provision this. So this is actually now going to create all the necessary records that I'm going to use to automatically run everything. And you're, I'm going to show you what the records it does in, in a second. Actually, I pushed this live. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to create uh, different configurations in different regions around the world. So different name servers in Constellix are going to be provisioned differently based upon how the CDNs, per, how your choice, your chosen CDNs are performing in those regions, right? Uh, let me implement this and push this through. And this is going to be uh, the last part of our demonstration for today. Uh, I promise I will not go into song or dance and, and bore you all. And we can get to the next step. So this is actually taking all these extra additional rules that we provisioned and it's applying it to um, our domain. All right, so it's provisioned through. So let me show you exactly what it's doing now. So not only are we measuring now synthetically, right, from these monitoring points, we're also gathering metrics all throughout the day based upon real end users, right? So when you go to certain websites, we're actually gathering these metrics. How long does this asset take to download um, from here? How long does this asset take to download from here? How long does this asset to take to download from here? You can see actually a lot of this data being shown um, if you go to our constellix.com, uh, if I go any spell constellix, uh, and if I go to my live CDN performance, you can actually see a lot of this um, metrics being pulled in from these different CDN providers um, and what's the speed and what's the performance they're coming in at, right? So we take all this data that we're showing you, right? And we're bringing it all in into our analytics engines, right? And it goes into Kafka and ClickHouse and all these other analytical tools, which we can, you know, process it and then, you know, an under analyze it, right? And then report back on it to create end, um, rules to give to our users. So at this point, what we do is um, we now are actually part of that configuration, which we used to have to manually do, but this is all automatically done. Um, is it actually it's going to create rules for users based upon um, different, uh, let me just go to the garden. So if I said, okay, in North America East, right, if I was on the garden CDN, these are all of uh, the states that it won. These are the most number of ASNs, right? Um, so if I was in Michigan, um, if I was on StackPath, Michigan had more ASNs, more networks that, per, that were faster for it than Bunny did. So we're going to prefer overall, it gets all of Michigan, but it doesn't get all of New York, right? Because um, Bunny CDN had more New York, but there are some networks that are faster going mm -hmm. over Bunny CDN, right? So this is just like if you think of this solution, right? I have two cell phone providers here, right? And I live near Washington, D.C. That's where our office is. And this is my Verizon cell phone, and this is my AT&T cell phone, right? At some points of the day, this CDN, I mean, one CDN provider, if I'm on Verizon, it's faster to use this CDN provider. But if I'm on this network, right, uh, if I'm on my AT&T cell phone, it's faster to use a different CDN provider, right? Why shouldn't I be allowed to, you know, route that user to the fastest CDN provider based upon that network for the data we have in the last two to four minutes, right? That is what advanced analytics of CDNs is doing for you. And that's what this is doing here. So it's actually pulling in this data, right? We look at the last two minutes, we've up to a half hour, right? We, we say, oh, we'd rather have the most current data, that means the most, but we don't have any data, we'll use data for the past half hour to make our decisions. 
And then we're constantly going to be building out this ASN network and which networks are faster to you, which, which CDN provider, right? Also, at the same point, we still have failover. We still have everything else. We can still do round robin. We can still do everything else. For now, we're making those decisions on the fly. So we take these things, we call these IP filters, um, and we now we apply them to, uh, I gotta, uh, I just like typing this over and over again. Um, right, we apply these to uh, IP filters to match predefined CDN. So if I look at um, my North America East configuration, uh, and if you go in here, uh, and you can see that if it matches uh, the StackPath IP filter, it's going to be using StackPath. If it matches the Bunny CDN CDN filter, it's going to be using Bunny CDN. Like Akamai, you can do the same thing with Akamai. You can see the same thing with Cashfly. Same thing with Fastly, right? If, if if you have one network that prefers another, you can do that. Now there are actually there's there's more advanced features you can do as well. Um, you actually can set up handicaps, right? You can say well. You know, I committed a bunch of bandwidth to this one provider, so I prefer them most of the time, unless they're like two seconds slower, then you can do like speed handicaps and say, okay, you know, it's a bunny CDN, I wanna add a thousand milliseconds to it, right? So if I add a thousand milliseconds to it, we're now gonna pretty much really make sure that StackPath gets all the traffic. Um, and this is done through the RUM data, or it's done through the, uh, the, the the synthetic checks as well. Uh, let me actually, I, I think I talked too long, so let me log in. Um, I'll say like having multiple browsers opening does not help me. Uh, we go to North America East over here. You can tell where I added the, the thousand milliseconds. So, it's now automatically going to be slower and garden's going to be faster and it shows like where the handicap value goes in right so you can even add handicaps to your data as well so that just kind of show you like what level of granularity you can put into your your multiple cdn configurations but really you know i went through about four or five different configurations all very quickly um to get where we are right um, and then there's more advanced features too, like the aiming. The reason why very few service providers can offer this is because we, you can actually provide this on your root domain, right? It could be on the server.us. It doesn't need to be on the garden.server.us because we have something what's called a name records, right? A name records allow you to take a C name and, and give you, respond with the A and the quad A records for you. Um, and so that's a big push in the industry as well. There, no one does it as unique as what uh, Constellix does provide for people. So that's that's actually a, a core feature that we require on how we provide the A-name solution, right? We, we involve the EDNS client subnet. We cache the queries. It's localized lookups. There's a whole, we've spent over a million dollars of R&D in perfecting that to give you the best possible resolution possible. Um, and so that's why you know, we have over a thousand domains, close to 200,000, around 200,000 domains using DNS failover with us right now. And we have over a thousand domains using us for specialized DNS lookups for multiple multi CDN for this one reason is because of how we specialize in the A name process, right? I already showed you the live CDN performance tool, right? There are tools out there that do that. Um, and so, what I want to ask everybody right now, and I know we're, I'm going to fly through the rest of this webinar, and I appreciate everyone taking their time, is um, what do you believe the, uh, oops, that's actually not the, the, the poll I wanted to offer. Let's do that poll first. Um, how much do you actually believe in outage costs um, when you're in, uh, If you're, when you're in a, uh, uh, and this is like a Gartner, and I actually don't even know the real answer to this one. Um, Jess, if you can slack me what the answer is, I'd be more than happy to uh, 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 let the world know what it is. But let's just talk about that. Um, uh, Jess, what's the answer? Do you know? Let's see if my staff's paying attention to me or they got bored with me. Um, let's see. So close poll, show results. All right. 
So most are believing yeah, it's about, um, I'm getting my magic answer now from, uh, uh, all right, it's $5,600 per minute, right? So um, the average outage um, in DNS Meet Easy and CD uh, and Constellix was 34 minutes. So if you were a customer that's 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 having 34 minutes outage, it's close to the 190,000 mark. But it's obviously dependent upon how long you're down. So it's $5,600 per minute is what the average organization believes they're suffering when they have an outage of their online services. Um, and so the the one that I did want to cover real quickly. Um, uh this this is a big one how much do you how much does everyone actually believe a multi cdn solution costs i'm just curious i'm just curious just curious give me let's ballpark numbers let's throw something out there let me know let me know let me know all right so All right, great. All right, interesting. Let's just hear the results because we're running out of time. Um, all right, 34% less than $100 per month. Congratulations, all right? Those are, um, so basic failover, and that, and that depends. So 9% of you, you must have gotten a quote from our competitors. Um, uh, very good. Um, once again, enterprise sales, charge as much as you can, break the bank. So yeah. Uh, no multi CDN solution should cost five thousand dollars. If you if you got a quote from one of our competitors, um, uh, please send it to us, and we'll give you the exact similar thing. So the CDN failover, let's talk about that. The CDN failover solution, the very basic one, um, the the and this is like the additional costs. Um, it is right. Um, I don't know if I shared it yet or not. The additional cost. Um, for us is $2 a month, right? So uh, it, it, you have your two different CDN providers. If they're charging you based on usage, right? And that's the thing, right? It's talking about um, what does the CDN provider charge you, right? If you're using a CDN provider that charges you on usage and you choose another CDN provider that charges you on usage, right? You're just splitting your usage. And you are, you may lose your bulk buying ability, right? If you're buying 500 gigabytes on one CDN provider and they give you discounts if you go higher and another 500 gigabytes, on another CDN provider give discounts if you go higher, but you may lose that bulk buying. But that's also if you wanna do round robining, right? You wanna split it 50-50. If you wanna give all the traffic to one, if that one goes down, you have that backup one, right? Our CDN failover solution is, a, a you know, based upon checking once a minute is a whopping $2 a month, right? Um, it's a very affordable solution. Um, the more advanced solutions, the ones where we're taking multi-user manage, um, real user monitoring and all these thousands of metrics to perform which network is faster based upon where you are, can be as much as a, an additional 50 to $100 a month per provider based upon how often you want this data in, updated, right? If you want it updated every five, 10 minutes, it's, it's like $10 per provider, right? These are not expensive solutions. Just like backup email is not an expensive solution anymore. Most mail servers automatically provide you, um, for instance, we use Google services and they give you all these backup MX records, right? These are not expensive solutions that you can put into your IT infrastructure and give you this sort of, um, of, of, this sort of uh, solution. So uh, that's kind of where I want to talk about. Um, Integrating with Constellix, I showed to you, it is cost effective. And this is starting at $20 per month for more of the advanced configurations. It gets as low as $2 per month for basic CDN failover. There's no reason you don't have CDN failover. Um, just do it, 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 it it's simple. And if your vendors don't support it, and that's the problem, the why, why aren't we moving there? Why aren't we getting to there? Is because CDNs don't want to. They wanna keep all your traffic inside. Um, they'll, they'll promise you they're not gonna go down. But you're also talking to a salesperson, right? You're talking to someone um, who's who's motivated on, on keeping your traffic internal. Be honest, right? You care about your organization. That means more to you. An outage causes you more stress and it causes you more heartache than anything else. So we got to start moving to that sort of thing. 
Um, when you do have a CDN outage, you have loss of revenue, loss of brand reputation. It's a public relations nightmare um, and excessive staff time. I mean, I don't know how much time is, is caused by the individuals on this call when there is an outage, right? We talked about how much a CDN provider costs. Um, the average outage um, that we've monitored is 34 minutes. Uh, in quarter one, just in our DNS failover solutions between DNS Made Easy and Constellix, there was an estimated $4.3 billion in savings by implementing proper failover solutions. Most of these are with internal servers. We're trying to really push the whole multi-CDN at this point. Give some CDN failover, give some CDN redundancy, build it into your plan. We work with a lot of CDNs very well. Once again, um, we have good relationships with other companies that we can get you quotes, you work with our staff and we can work with them um, and build that up. Um, so now is a point where you can have any Q&A. Um, uh, does this only work with HTTP because I'm completely closed at all HTTP and only allow HTTPS? Yes, you can do HTTPS as well. Um, you, you, it doesn't have to just be HTTP. Um, the TTL is in seconds, right? That is correct. Uh, the TTLs are in sections. Um, not every country has the same backbone. It seems like Constellix will allow us to manage this issue. Should I file in the, in the U.S. and not local to say Israel? Hope this is understandable. Yes, you will, we could base the decisions based upon the real users are, right? Uh, you're making those decisions. So we don't have a pop in Israel. We have pops um, right now in um, London, Frankfurt, Amsterdam. We're turning up two pops in Stockholm and in Paris right now. Uh, COVID delays and everything like that, but those are going live. Um, we're also in Mumbai. Um, so that traffic will be answered by those regions, but we're gonna get the data though from users, like for instance, in Israel. Israel is gonna say, okay, this CDN's faster for these networks, this CDN's faster for these networks, and then that's the data we're gonna give you in your DNS response. Um, uh, transfer between countries and balancing different traffic forms since it would be better to pre-transfer all data into one region. We talked about the different regions, um, uh, IPv4. So if the CDN provider provides IPv4 and IPv6, we just respond back with those IPs. Um, uh, IPv6 placeholders, management page, uh, as it takes to cut and paste. Uh, so William, we have a question on it takes to cut and paste and recheck the correctness of the IPv6 into DNS placeholders. Is there an easier way? I don't quite understand that question. So um, we're gonna, um, uh, um, please um, ask me that as well. Someone said, do we have any pops in Canada? Yes, we do. Um, we do have uh, pops. We just put a pop in Toronto. Um, and we're now, the, the once again, that's a huge, uh, Toronto's the largest city in, in Canada. Um, that goes along. We have a lot of other pops uh, very close to Canada, uh, Seattle, Chicago, New York. Um, that's also, you know, we're the pretty much the, the world leader and authoritative DNS in, in, in Toronto as well. Um, another question is, uh, how is the billing utilized? The billing is based upon, you know, how many, how often you want to check and stuff like that. I gave you a quick little breakdown on the pricing um, and stuff like that. Um, so, wow. Well, we're at the full hour. I do apologize. I think that's most of we go through. I don't got any other questions at, at right now. So I went through all of them. That's perfect. Um, what I want to know right now is was this, um, I hope you, at the end of this webinar, you're going to get of a survey. Please answer that survey. Um, and these are some thoughts on the next webinar that we'd like to do probably about in about a month. Um, we'd like to do about real time anomaly detection, DNS provider comparisons. Uh, DNS tips and tricks, uh, DDoS attack prevention. Let me know and we can talk about those sort of things. And we immediately want to bring in other uh, CEOs, presidents, uh, VPs of infrastructure um, from some of our uh, partner companies that we can do and talk about these sort of things um, and, and going forward. So I see right now going in, a lot of people are interested and I'll, I'll show the poll. I'm going to close it. Uh, and share the results. A lot of people are actually interested in DDoS attack prevention. So, I mean, having a good CDN provider or having numerous CDN providers actually gives you that, right? Because that's your front end piece that they actually have to deal with a lot of those attacks, which is a good thing to do um, at that same point. Um, so, 
that's it. I think I hit the, the hour mark. Um, if anyone has any other questions, um, uh, I can recheck and edit and cut. Okay, does that? That's it. That's everything. I think I, I hit up almost all the questions. If you have anything else, please reach out to that out to us. You can please reach out to me individually. I'm excited to talk about it. My biggest goal in life right now is to increase uptime of the companies, right? So if you're if you're building out your infrastructure, if you haven't thought about multi-CDN, I wanted to show you how simple it is to implement the very basic features of CDN failover, backup disaster recovery CDN plans, load balancing CDNs, you know, taking them out of the mix, um, making decisions based upon performance. So I want to show you how easy it is to set up. And I, we hope that if you have any questions on implementing that, you let us know. So once again, thank you very much.